Hello, everyone. I'm Emily Woodruff, the health reporter for the Times Picayune New Orleans Advocate, and I'm joined by my colleague, Blake Patterson, our Capital News Bureau reporter in Baton Rouge. And today we are talking to Dr. Anthony Fauci, White House Chief Medical Advisor and Director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, and Dr. Cameron Webb, the Senior Policy Advisor for the COVID-19 Equity. Welcome, and thank you both so much for being here. Good to be with you. Thanks for having us. So we took questions from readers all over the state for this, and we got so many responses back, and I'm just going to jump right in with them so we can get as many answered as possible. Um, here in Louisiana yesterday, it was announced that the P1 variant we've seen in large numbers in Brazil was detected here for the first time. Um, a reader from St. John the Baptist Parish asks, with the new variant out in Louisiana and people who have been vaccinated at risk as well, why should one get vaccinated with all the potential side effects just from the vaccine itself? So tell us how the vaccines work on the variants. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the question of why one should get vaccinated, even before you start talking about variants, that the vaccine is life-saving for so many, I mean, we've had now 570 plus thousand people in the United States have died from this. So that right there, full stop, is the reason to get vaccinated. Also, you get vaccinated, you're going to be stopping the dynamics of the outbreak with regard to you. Because many young people usually say, well, you know, I've heard that young people do really well. They may get infected, but statistically, the chances are they may not get any symptoms at all. And they might, in fact, just go along and not even know they're infected. So why should I bother? Well, first of all, we're seeing now more and more young people are getting infected and getting seriously ill. So that's one of the things you're not going to be scot-free. You may get seriously ill. But even if you don't and you get infected and have no symptoms, what you might be doing inadvertently and even innocently is passing on the infection to someone else who might pass it on to someone else who might actually have a serious outcome. That could be someone's brother, mother, father, wife, husband. You want to have both the personal responsibility and a societal responsibility. That's the first thing. With regard to the variants, Right now, the variants are a very minor component of what's going on. Most of it is dominated by the 117, which is dominating in our country. The P1 variant is here. And if you look at test tube types of experiments, the vaccine efficacy is diminished slightly, but not really profoundly, so that you get a benefit even if the variant is the one that you get infected by. But the chances are, if you get infected, you're going to get infected with the dominant virus, which is the B117. Gotcha. So these, these vaccines work against these variants? Well, not as well as the baseline one, but it gives you a degree of protection that might prevent you from getting serious disease. That we know for sure. It may not be as exactly good against the original one, but the diminution is not enough to make you seriously ill so that you can be protected against serious illness. And just to, just to add, uh, you know, just think about where variants come from when virus has the opportunity to replicate. So anytime somebody is infected and you're seeing more virus, uh, you know, being produced within that body, those are opportunities to create new variants. And those variants, that, you know, if you create a, a variant of in that replication process, there's a version of the virus that's more effective at spreading from person to person or more effective at harming people. Well, that's how you get the emergence of a new variant. And so that's another reason why we keep saying we're in this race vaccination against the variants because it's so important for us to get folks covered to prevent uh, really the, the continued spread of this pandemic uh, so that we can stop the the likelihood of more of these variants causing harm. Uh, and I hear a lot from people about this idea of natural immunity. So when someone has had coronavirus already, um, and a reader from, in New Orleans asks, how does natural immunity compare to that provided by a vaccine in terms of reducing symptoms, preventing illness, and the time frame in which a relatively high level of protection is expected? 
Yeah, that's a great question. I'm glad somebody asked that because we know now this virus, not all of the viruses, but this virus, the protection that's induced by the vaccine is better than the protection induced by previous infection. So if you get infected previously and I get vaccinated and you and I both get exposed to the same virus, I have a better chance of being protected than you do. No doubt about that now. We're seeing that very, very much uh, verified uh, in a number of different observations in different countries throughout the world. Um, and <clears throat> here in Louisiana, um, we're at about a 32% rate of uh, people who have received at least one vaccine in the population. Um, but many parishes are below that, um, you know, 20%, our lowest is 8%. And a reader from New Orleans is asking about people she knows um, who haven't taken it. She says, I'm fully vaccinated and believe in getting vaccinated. However, my husband refuses as he does not trust the government, the CDC. How do I respond and what would you say to him? Uh, you know, I always start that answer with digging a little deeper and understanding what somebody doesn't trust. I mean, uh, it's it makes good sense for people to have questions. If somebody shows up with a vial full of who knows what and says, I want to stick this in your arm, you should have questions. And so I think that we should all take that posture of listening, of hearing what people have to say. If it comes down to not trusting the government, government or some of the institutions, then you ask that individual, well, who do you trust? Do you trust your own doctor? And most people would say yes. Do you trust your pharmacist? Could you talk to them about this vaccine and if it would be helpful for you given your own medical dynamics? You know, that's one of the important ways to do this is find out who are those trusted messengers, who, who they can say, okay, now I'm ready and willing to listen. This isn't coming from the government on high. This is coming from, from my doctor and she's been a really helpful person in my life throughout the year. And so it's important for me to hear it directly from her. I think that's one of the key dynamics that we have to keep in mind is you got to listen to folks and then you got to connect them with trusted messengers. Gotcha. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Blake, who I know has some great questions from readers as well. Yeah. So this question came from a uh, healthcare worker in Abita Springs. Um, she said that uh, there's concern among some of the 18 to 30 year old women that she interacts with that the vaccine might impact their future fertility. Um, I was wondering if you could address those concerns. Yeah, there's absolutely no, re not only no evidence that this happens, there's no biological reason to even suspect that it would. So, you know, that's one of the reasons we, I mean, it, it, as Cameron said, you know, it's logical to ask questions. People ask questions and you try and give them the answers that are based on data and facts. And when you look at the history of vaccines in general and look at the history of this particular series of vaccines, not only does there no evidence of that, but there's no reason to believe that there would be any mechanism of that. Yeah, this is this is one of those, uh, we say disinformation and misinformation has run rampant. You know, folks have tracked, well, where did this start? And, and I believe there was some German uh, scientist who suggested that there is a protein that may be uh, similar uh, between the vaccine and what it's targeting and a woman's placenta. And ultimately that was debunked by several people. But again, that misinformation lives on. So it's important to know what the source of a statement is and then understand better. And the thing to keep in mind is, what we do know is that COVID-19 uh, infection causes tremendous harm on pregnant women. What we do know is that is a significant risk to their health. And we also know that the, va the vaccine itself is safe, it's effective, and it passes from the woman to the baby as they're, as they're born. So that's also really valuable as well. So I think it's a matter of really sharing the true facts, the real science behind it. And that's just the most recent data on, on pregnancy itself. Um, a number of readers asked why, if they have been vaccinated, um, it's still important that they wear masks. Yeah. So right now, and we're gaining more information on this, but right now you need to understand that the primary endpoint for the vaccine trials was whether it protects you against clinically recognizable disease. The information about whether it protects you against getting asymptomatic infection we're learning more and more about that, but we're not really sure. And people can get infected 
even though they are vaccinated and almost always will have no symptoms. So one of the things you have to be concerned about is that you don't want to be infected, have virus in your nasopharynx, and because you feel so well, because you don't have any symptoms, pass it innocently and inadvertently onto someone else. So wearing of the mask after vaccine is primarily so that you don't, just without even realizing it, pass an infection onto someone else. Secondly, there may be variants around that, as I mentioned in response to the question just a moment ago, that are a little bit less protected by the vaccine, so you want to protect yourself against the variants. As we get more and more information about does a vaccine protect you from transmitting to others, then you're going to likely see a change in the recommendations about what vaccine vaccinated people can do. But right now, in order to be really safe and protect others, and to some extent protect yourself, we're, re we're recommending that when you're around unvaccinated people on the outside, not in your own home, if you're in the safety of your own home, it's different, that you should wear a mask. And, and just keep in mind, that Kate, there's a significant number of cases still in so many of our communities. And even though these are incredibly effective vaccines, right, 95% uh, efficacy we saw in the trials for Pfizer, 94% for Moderna, that means out of 100 people, it's possible that five of them wouldn't have a strong response. And so I think that it's also important with that much circulating virus in our communities that, yes, the great likelihood is that you will be protected. But if, in, in you know, by some chance you're not, not, wearing that mask is that next line of defense for you as well. So it's just other things to keep in mind. Well, thank you, Dr. Webb and uh, Dr. Fauci for uh, answering our readers' questions. We really appreciate it and understand you have a, a busy schedule ahead. So uh, thank you again. Thank you. Good to be with you. Thank you for having us.